So I'm back this time with the solution set for paper one of the pattern legend examination of 2016. Straight away moving on to the questions, part A has one option correct. So let us see the solutions to each of the questions. So question one relates to substitution of applicants in a patent application and this is done under section 20. You can make a request for substitution of the applicant by filing a form 6 under rule 34.1, 35.1 or 36.1 and the applicable official fee is rupees 800 or 4000 depending on the type of entity. Substitution of applicant may be required when the applicant has assigned his or her rights to someone else and the assignee needs to be brought into the records. Also, substitution may be required in case one or more of the joint applicants dies. Question 2 relates to a request for condonation of delay in any procedure before the controller of patents in case of the prosecution of a patent application and a request for condonation of delay can be filed on a petition filed under Rule 138 of the Patent Rules. For answering question 3, you need to refer to Section 88, Subsection 4, which provides for the revision of terms and conditions of a compulsory license once it has been granted. And this request could be made by the licensee who has been given a compulsory license after working the invention for at least 12 months from the date of grant of the compulsory license. For answering question 4, you need to first refer to section 53 which provides for what is the term of a patent and it is to be counted from 20 years from the date of patent. Now, date of patent is provided under section 45. So, as per section 45, date of patent is the date of filing of the patent application which in the case of convention application is the date of filing of the patent application in India. So, since the question talks about a convention application, therefore answer B is correct which is 20 years from the date of filing of the application in India. Had this been a PCT national phase application, the filing date would have been the international filing date which is as per section 138 subsection 5. So, question 5 relates to opposition to an application for restoration of a patent when the patentee forgets to file the renewal fee of the patent. In that case, he could file a request for restoration of patent under section 60 and this could be opposed by any any person under section 61 1a and 1b. So, if you refer to these sections, you will find that part c is the correct option as the ground for opposition to restoration of a patent. Question 6 relates to overdue annual fee which is payable once a patent is granted. So, please note that for the first two years from the date of filing, if a patent is granted in between that period, no annual fee is payable for those initial two years. But for any patent which is granted after the period of two years, the annual maintenance fee fee would be payable and it is called the overdue annual fee and the time period for filing that is 3 months from the date of the recordal of the patent. Question 7 relates to section 3D. It provides that a new ester of a known medicine would be patentable only if, if it has an improved efficacy. This is provided under the explanation of section 3D and also the Supreme Court in the Novartis decision has defined what is the meaning of efficacy and it has been defined to include therapeutic efficacy and thus out of the given options, option A appears to be the correct option. For question 8, refer to rule 24C which provides that a request for expedited examination is filed on form 18A. For question 9, you need to refer to section 117A subsection 2 which provides the sections which are appealable before the High Court now since the IPAB stands dissolved. For question 10, you could refer to section 29 to 32 which provides for the various exceptions based on which no anticipation would be considered if the conditions provided in those sections are satisfied. Thus, the correct option here is option D which means that either of A or B or both could be the grounds based on which the controller shall not refuse to grant a patent or revoke a granted patent. Question 11 relates to section 92A which provides for grant of compulsory license for exporting of a patented pharmaceutical product to any country which does not have sufficient or no manufacturing capacity at all. And this is specifically to address a public health problem in that particular country. Question 12 relates to statement of working which is provided under form 27 and the applicable sections for that are section 146 subsection 2 and rule 131 sub rule 1. And you need to provide details of the extent to which the patented invention has been commercially produced or used in India. Question 13 relates to section 66 wherein the central government could ask for revocation of a patent which is against the public interest and the central government could give the patentee an opportunity of being heard and then make a declaration that the patent is liable to be revoked in the official gazette before revoking the patent. I made a detailed video for revocation of patents under section 66. You could refer to that if you want to have more information regarding this particular section. Question 14 relates 
relates to withdrawal of a patent application which is done on form 29 and this is done under section 11b subsection 4 and the form 29 could be filed anytime after filing and before grant of a patent on the patent application. Question 15 relates to a situation wherein a patent has been opposed based on the ground of wrongful obtaining under section 25.2 and if the objection is found to be true the opponent has the option of getting his name included as the name of the patentee instead of the original patentee who was there and this is done under form 12 which is provided under section 26 subsection 1 plus subsection 52 subsection 2. Question 16 relates to definition of inventive step under section 21JA and option C reflects the true definition of inventive step as is provided under the Patents Act. For question 17 you need to refer to section 2 subsection IA which provides the definition for international application as the one which is filed in accordance with the Patent Cooperation Treaty. Question 18 relates to section 3C which provides for non-patentability of mere discovery of known living or non-living substances and, and discovery of a new galaxy would most probably fall under section 3C of the Patents Act and would be considered as non-patentable. Question 19 relates to section 12 of the Patents Act under which the examiner to whom the application is referred for examination would conduct the examination of the patent application. For answering question 20 you need to refer to section 11A subsection 7 which provides that the patent applicant would have like privileges and rights as if a patent for the invention has been granted. So what this means is when the patent application is still pending and a patent has not been granted the rights of the patent applicant would be considered to have started from the date of publication of the patent application but he can only file a suit for infringement once the patent has been granted. However, when you are claiming damages since your rights are considered to have begun from the date of publication you have the right to claim damages from that particular date. Question 21 relates to section 28 which provides for mention of inventors as such in the patent and this is done under form 8. I believe the question is incorrect because it mentions about patent certificate. There is nothing like mention of inventors as such on a patent certificate even the act doesn't provide it so the question is wrongly worded so you can include one or more additional inventors in the patent or you could ask for deletion of the inventors from the patent application for question 22 refer to rule 56 sub rule 1 which provides that an opposition board in a in an opposition proceeding is constituted on the receipt of notice of opposition and this activity happens at the patent office end question 23 relates to the exceptions provided under section 31 so if there is a display of an invention with the consent of the true and first inventor at an exhibition which has been notified by the central government then the application if it has been made by the applicant uh, not later than 12 months after the display then that prior display would not be considered to be anticipating the patent application. So the prior display would not act as a prior art for the patent application when it is examined. For question 24 please note that there is no specific definition provided in the act for date of recordal but you could refer to section 43 and it provides that it is the recording of the date of grant of the patent in the register of patents. So once a patent is granted, the date on which the patent has been granted is recorded in the register of patents and that is called the date of record. Question 25 relates to section 57 wherein an amendment of a patent has been made after the grant. So any such request for amendment is published and any person interested could file an opposition to the amendment. This is provided under section 57 read with rule 81 sub rule 3 b and the opposition could be filed on form 14 along with an official fee of 2400 or 12,000 depending on the type of entity which is making the opposition application and the opposition is to be filed within three months from the date of publication of the information about the amendment. Question 26 relates to an application for termination of a compulsory license which is provided under section 94. This request could be filed on form 21 under rule 102 and the applicable fee for that is 2400 or 12,000 depending on the type of entity. Question 27 relates to section 39 or foreign filing permission as we call it. This is to be done on form 25 and the provision provides that any person who is resident in India needs to take a permission from the patent office before he files a patent application for an invention in a foreign country. So if a patent application is intended to be filed first outside India for an invention by a resident who is in India then he needs to obtain a permission from the patent office on form 25. Question 28 relates to section 63 which provides that a patentee may offer to surrender his patent anytime from the grant of patent. So if a patentee is not interested in continuing with the patent he could surrender it. Question 29 relates to definition of patent
20 as provided under section 2 subsection 1 p as per which option a is the correct option question 30 requires you to identify what out of the given options would not be considered as a prior art so prior art is anything which is there in the public domain so any publication pattern would be there in the public domain and thus it would form a prior art however when you are disclosing the invention to a close group of members who are bound by a non-disclosure agreement so under a non-disclosure agreement you cannot disclose it to the outside public and thus this may not be considered as a prior art because this is amongst a close group and they would not have disclosed it to the public under the non-disclosure agreement so to me option b appears to be correct for part b there are two statements that are given out of which maybe one of them could be true or both could be true or else both could be false for question 31 you need to understand that a provisional application is never published so a provisional specification would not be published even if you file a request for early publication and thus statement one is incorrect while statement 2 is the correct option and thus option b should be the correct answer moving on to question 32 it relates to section 28 which relates to mention of inventor as such in a pattern here statement 2 is correct which is provided under section 28 language however statement 1 is incorrect because the request needs to be made before the grant of patent so while making this video i realized that i have marked the incorrect option this should be b because first option is incorrect while the second statement is correct question 33 relates to section 10 subsection 4 a to d and it relates to the use of biological material for the invention and if the invention uses a biological material you need to deposit the material at an international depository authority and thus the statement one is the correct statement while statement two is the incorrect statement and thus option a should be the correct answer for question 34 you need to refer to section 136 subsection 3 which provides that no post dating of conventional application is applicable under section 17 and thus a convention and application can be filed only within 12 months from the earliest priority application and there is no extension beyond the 12 month period from the earliest priority application allowed thus only statement 1 is the correct statement for question 35 refer to section 6 as per which both statements 1 and 2 are correct options for question 36 refer to section 84 subsection a a2 and a4 which provides what would be considered as the situations under which the reasonable requirement of the public shall not be deemed to have been met I have made a detailed video on the provisions of compulsory license and you could refer to it if you want to know about the provision in detail. For question 37, refer to section 16. A divisional application could be filed anytime before the grant of the patent on the parent application. And thus, statement 1 is not the correct option because it says that a divisional application could only be filed after issuance of FER. That is not the case. Statement 2 is a correct statement as would be apparent from the language of section 16. For question 38, refer to the provision of patent of addition under section 54 as per which both statements 1 and 2 are incorrect options. For question 39 refer to section 11b subsection 1 which provides that the request for examination could be filed by any person interested and obviously the request for examination could be filed by the patent applicant but statement 2 appears to be incorrect and only statement 1 is correct therefore the correct answer is option A. Question 40 relates to form 5 or section 10 subsection 6. The declaration of inventorship is to be filed along with the complete specification or or within one month from the date of filing of the complete specification thus statement one is incorrect also the form five is required to be filed along with the convention application and thus statement two is correct option therefore your answer should be b for part c more than one option could be correct in each of the questions question 41 relates to section 121 of the patents act and it says that if someone uses wrongfully uses the word patent office then he could be imprisoned for a term which may be extended up to six months or it could be fine or both thus option c would also be correct so here all the three options are the correct options and thus option b is the correct option question 42 is a trick question so you need to refer to section 9 subsection 2 it provides that when there are two provisional applications and you are combining them to file a complete specification then the date for the complete specification would be counted from the earliest of the provisional applications so now here there are two provisional applications this is the first one and this is the second one and you are required to provide the valid dates on which the complete specification could be filed so your 12 month period would be counted from this particular date which is the 
date of the first application and thus 1-1-2011 would be the last date by which the complete specification could be filed. However, there is also a date of 31st December 2010 which is before the last date. So, you could also file a complete specification before the last date and thus this would also qualify as a valid date for filing the complete specification. All the other dates are beyond the last date which is 1-1-2011 and thus these would be the incorrect options. For question 43, you need to refer to the definition of startup provided under rule 2 FB. The statements which are given here are as per the old provision, you need to refer to the new definition of startup. For question 44, you need to refer to rule 24C which provides the entities which could request for an expedited examination as per which a startup company could do it or an international applicant who has chosen India as the international search authority. The amended rule 24C also provides for some other options where an expedited examination could be requested such as female applicants or government institutions or government agencies. Question 45 requires you to determine the date by which you need to file a request for examination for an ordinary patent application. So, it has to be within 48 months from the date of priority or the date of filing whichever is earlier. So, in case of an ordinary patent application, you do not have a date of priority as such or the date of priority is same as the date of filing and thus need to count the 48 months from the date of 1st of January 2010 and thus option B is the correct option. Section 46 relates to the penalties in case of, a, of contravention of the secrecy directions under section 35 or if a foreign filing permission has not been sought and it provides that any application for patent would be deemed to be abandoned or if a patent has been granted it could be revoked under section 64 in case of non-compliance of section 35 or section 39. Question 47 relates to section 61 which relates to oppositions in case of a restoration for Pattern. As per language of section 61, options B and D are the correct option. Question 48 is based on section 11B and it provides that the request for examination could be filed by the applicant or any person interested. So, as per that, option D is the correct option. Now, here the applicants are X and Y and one of the joint applicants, in my opinion, cannot file the request for examination. The request has to be filed jointly by both the applicants as per the language of the provision and thus I do not see A, B or C as the correct options. Again, this is my opinion. In case your opinion is different from this, please share your thoughts. We have already dealt with a situation under question 49 and it relates to an opposition which is filed in respect of an amendment after grant of a patent. The opposition could be filed on a form 14 and this is under rule 85. Rule 85 also provides that the procedure which is provided under rule 57 to 63 also applies for the opposition hearing and this requires the opponent to file a request for hearing also if he wants the controller to hear out his arguments and thus option D would also be the correct option. So, B and D are the correct options in my opinion. Question 50 relates to the civil powers of the controller and this is provided under section 77 1F whereby the controller could review his own decision upon a request being made. So, this is all about the solution set for paper 1 of 2016 in case you have any questions or any specific comments, please drop them in the comments box and I'll be happy to answer those. In case you want me to make videos on any specific topics covering the patent agent examination, please let me know what topics you want me to cover. Thank you very much.